Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy chapter number 18 verse 18 I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. If a prophet is to be true, his words shall surely come to pass. If not, he is false. Though in certain circumstances one be celebrated, but brings sorrow. Take note of Deuteronomy chapter number 18 and verse 22. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God is still speaking through his servant Apostle Petros Alpha. Remember to share and subscribe for more transformative word and prophecies from God. Father Lord Jesus, I thank you Father for such an opportunity. An opportunity, Father, to prove your reality, to unveil your mysteries through your voice. Father, I hereby surrender the nation into your hands, the people that are joining me right now, wherever they might be watching from, Father. Touch them. Equip their hearts, Father, with patience, great understanding, hope in your glory, hope in your intervention, in the mighty name of Jesus. As I pray, Father, touch their hearts, open their hearts, let them be able to receive the word of God, the voice of God. Let them know that you are a God who never fails. You are a God who answers. You are a God who hears the prayers of the saints and the servants. In Jesus' mighty name, remember our nation. Remember our leaders. Remember everybody. Cover them by the blood of Jesus. Cover them by the blood of Jesus. Let your will be done. As we continue speaking your word and living for you, Christ, as your servants, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, where can we go from the presence of God? God is so powerful. We can never achieve anything in this time of life without God. Who am I? without God. Who are you without God? You need God in your life. And you need his presence in your life. Where the presence of God is, there is a revelation, there is understanding, there is patience, and there is love. There is faithfulness. Now, God is looking for people that are filled with his presence so that they can take over and lead the nation to the next level. There is a promise upon the nation. There is a promise upon your life. There is a promise of God that is still pending, that is yet to be fulfilled. How then can you fulfill the promises of God, the promises of Abraham? 
How can you fulfill them without the presence of God? I want you to take note of this. No man, and not even one single man, can survive a minute without a spirit. We have two types of spirits. We have the Holy Spirit, and we have the evil spirit. The purpose of the Holy Spirit, it is to influence your day, your daily activities, your day-to-day -day life in a good manner, in a good way, in a positive way. The purpose of the evil spirit, it is to influence your day, your day-to-day -day life in an evil way and evil manner. When you start doing bad things in your life, your life is being controlled by an evil spirit. When you do good things in your life, your life is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Where there is the Holy Spirit, there is kindness, there is love, there is patience, there is self-control, there is endurance, there is peace. But where there is no Holy Spirit, there is fighting, suffering, poverty, failure, challenges, setback, sicknesses. Because it is the devil and the evil spirit that influence bad things in our lives. So you need either one. You must have the Holy Spirit or you must have the evil spirit so that you can survive. Now, who are you without the presence of God? What are you without the presence of God? Without the presence of God, you have the presence of the devil. Therefore, bad things will fall, up, fall in your way. Bad things will follow you. Remember the Bible says in the book of Mark 16, from verse 17 going downwards to verse 20. The Bible says the disciples went and preached the word of God. And Jesus was with them to confirm his word with signs and wonders. Signs and wonders were being confirmed, following them that believe. Why? Because they have the Holy Spirit. Now, God told me something about this nation and about your life. When I gave a prophecy in February about the undressing of politicians, some of you, you took it for granted. But today I've come again with the voice of God and the message of God. I want you to know that God haven't started. There are so many things that are still yet to come out on the politicians. Why would God undress politicians? God want politicians to repent from their evil ways that they do behind the public. Many politicians that you see according to their respected positions, when you see them on public addressing you, it is not who exactly they are. How you see them is not how they are. But God knows what is behind their back. So God gave me a prophecy weeks back, some time back, when I started talking about the vision that God showed me, whereby God was undressing politicians. Hmm. And I even stated that embarrassment is waiting for top political figures in the government. I said it. And I said that we should pray to protect the image of the nation. I said it to those who follow me and remember. I said it. And I said I saw news 
I saw internet. I saw newspapers. Some of you, you still remember. Now, see what has happened to the vice president of the nation of Zimbabwe. Embarrassment. Until he had to resign by himself. He had to resign. And in the letter of his resignation, to those who have read it, he spoke about protecting the image of the government and the image of Zimbabwe. The same thing that I spoke about. He was so embarrassed. Now, what is it that God wants with politicians? What is it that God wants with the nation of Zimbabwe? God is just to say, leave what you are doing. Repent. Open your eyes and see the suffering of the people of Zimbabwe. You have a lot of things that you have hide on your back. If you don't repent and do the right thing, God said, I am going to undress you. And I want to tell you, and I want every Zimbabwean and everybody to know that when it comes to the undressing of politicians by the Spirit of God and by the angel of God, it is just the beginning. More is about to come. More is going to happen. I strongly that you have believed me. Now, when the presence of God is upon a man, you don't need to do all these evil things. You live according to the Spirit of God. I always say, the sufferings of the people today, it is because of those who are on top of them. I mean, leaders, fathers in houses, our mothers. It is not only about politics and political parties. If your father have taken evil spirits so that he can gain promotion on his work, it will benefit him when he takes that promotion. But what is going to happen in the generation to come? What those who are above us do out of the presence of God, it affects us who will come in the next generation. Those who are above us, if they walk out of the will of God, they create a serious challenge for the generation to come. So what am I saying? I'm saying fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, political leaders, government officials, whosoever you are, before we make certain decisions, let us consider the presence of God. Before we put our feet into something else that will hinder the future of the generation to come, let us consider the presence of God. What is God saying? And what is the plan of God? And what is the will of God? That's why I was talking about two spirits, the Holy Spirit and the evil spirit. I mean, don't need to be, you don't need to be influenced by the evil spirit on everything that you want to do. Every activity, every plan that you have in life, you don't need to be influenced by the evil spirit. Because the evil spirit influences you to be self-centered, to be selfish, to focus on yourself, and yet you have been exalted on a position to care for the people. The evil spirit will give you pride, and yet you have been exalted to a position by the same people that you have pride over. But when you have the spirit of God, you are led by the wisdom of God. You are led by the Spirit of God. Those who walk in the path of God, they never fail, my brother. They never suffer. They never fail. 
They don't fall in dungeons. They don't fall in pit. Why? Because the Lord and the word of God is the light on their feet. So they will never stumble because our God never sleeps nor slumber. So once we give ourselves to him and we dwell or live in his presence and we allow the Holy Spirit to influence our day-to-day -day activities, our plans of the day, our plans in politics, our plans in government, our plans as a nation, we will never fail. And we will bring that which have been tried to be brought in the presence of people for a long time. We will bring it within a short moment of time. Yes. As I've said earlier on, you need to choose between the two. But it is good for you to have your day and every day of your life under the presence of God, being guided by the Spirit of God. God is not a man that he should lie. In God, there are promises that are given, promises not to destroy, promises not to scatter, but promises of prosperity. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I know the plans that are for you. Plans not to bring disaster, but plans to prosper you. This is the plan of God upon your life. This is the plan of God upon your nation. Therefore, whatever challenge that you can face in politics, in your business, in your marriage, whatever challenge that you can face, it needs you to remain calm in love and under the Spirit of God. When you remain calm in, in love under the Spirit of God, you attract the promise of God. Remember, there are certain things that take time, but when they are taking a lot of time, it does not mean that it is denial or it is failure. Now, listen to this. We have politicians that have been born politicians by God. But because of lack of patience, why? Because they don't have the Spirit of God. They don't live in the presence of God. They lack the patience. Therefore, they started going to take evil spirits, to go to witches, wizards, to go to traditional spiritualists, to take some powers so that they can gain the positions and the promotions which God had already given them, but they were not patient enough to wait for the time. Now, when they took over, they started to mislead people. Why? Because they did not consider God. They did not wait for God. Do you know that disciplining yourself in certain areas of your life It is very important. I know disciplining yourself, it is painful. But the pain of disciplining yourself, it is very small than the pain of regret. The pain of disciplining yourself, it is for a while. One day, two days, you tell yourself just to relax and wait upon the Lord to be patient, to endure, then you wait for God. It's two, three days that you suffer in that pain of disciplining yourself. But now, if you fail to discipline yourself now, and if you enter into something, and if it goes wrong, the pain that comes now is bigger than the pain of just disciplining yourself. Why? It is the pain of regret that will follow. And the pain of regret lives forever for the rest of your life. You will live to tell stories to your children. Think about it. I don't know why people, we don't learn from our past. Why we don't learn from our past. All those who are in politics, 
They have been given a good example by God. The example of our former president, Rupert Mugabe. He did what he did, that everybody knows that it was not good. But where is he? How was his, 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 his falling down? How did he come to be from hero to zero? Now, remember, I said one thing to Ben Haddad. Ben Haddad, don't boast because of just being able to wear the armor of fighting. Remember, as you wear the armor of fighting and you boast upon it, there is somebody who can remove it. And that one who can remove it needs to be more glorified than that one who wears it. Ab, with his unbelieving, he knew that above every other king, there is God. Though he had married Jezebel, and he started worshiping evil idols. He knew that there is God. And he knew that the God of Elijah, he is still living and he is still there, the God of Israel. So what am I saying? I'm saying it is never too late for political leaders to repent. It is never too late for you yourself, you are watching me, to repent and stay in love. Perseverance and insurance. Now, what does that help us in our lives? Now take note of this. Let us go to the Bible. In the presence of God, there are fruits that comes out. Perseverance and love Understanding, kindness, self-control, those are some of the fruits that comes from the Holy Spirit. So if you live under the presence of God, you are guided by the presence of God. And you live to be fruitful. And your fruits does not benefit you alone, but they benefit the whole of your generation. If you read Psalms 40 verse 1, the Bible says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me, and he heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit. Take note of that. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me, and he heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the merry clay. And set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Take note of that. He established my goings. Remember, we have a life to live. And take note of this. You live today for tomorrow. Meaning to say, what you do today determines what happens tomorrow. Our tomorrow is determined by our today. I mean, what we do today determines what happens tomorrow. If there is no today, then there is no tomorrow. If there is no tomorrow, then there is no today. So, we have goings that needs to be established by God. We have goings that needs to be established by God. The Bible says, He put my feet upon the rock and established my goings. Why on the rock? To secure the foundation of your goings, to make sure that nothing and nothing can be able to destroy you from the pit to the rock, from the mud to the rock. We have a going as a nation of Zimbabwe. We have somewhere where we are going. And remember, as a nation, we have a promise. We are a breadbasket country. And remember, as an individual, 
you do have a promise. There is a promise of your life. There is a promise of God upon your life. Therefore, for you to be able to reach to it, you need to wait patiently upon the Lord. Psalms 40, verse 1 to 3. Wait patiently upon the Lord. Wait patiently upon the Lord. Why? Because when you wait, wait, okay, patiently, you are giving God opportunity to work out something by himself without your own input. Take note of that. God does not need a lot of, a lot of your power, your tricks, so that he can work out a testimony and a miracle in your life. God needs you to stay under his presence. When you are under the presence of God, you cannot fail. And you have patience and you have endurance. You can wait upon the Lord. And God will hear your cries. And he will pick you from the pit. I know I'm talking to somebody. You are in the pit. Somebody, you are in the mud. God is about to lift you up of that pit. God is about to take you out of that mud. The situations, the failure, the challenges that you are facing as an individual. God is about to pick you up. And the nation, your nation, God is about to pick it up. Not by human means, but by his own means. All that is needed is for you to stay in the presence. How do you stay in the presence? Pray. Pray. Seek God. Seek God. And let us not be tired as a nation of Zimbabwe. Let us not be tired as a people of Zimbabwe. Let us not be tired as individuals. You don't need to be tired. Remember, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. The Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing. The prayer that we can do, resisting from fighting, resisting from fighting each other, it is the well-doing that God is requiring from us. Stop fighting. Stop violence. Stop killing each other. Stop arresting each other. Stop blaming each other. Stop the heart rage. Stop the divisions. Have unity. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Let us continue in doing well. For in due season we shall reap. Now take note of that. In due season... We shall reap. God's time is the best time in everything in life. Who knew that we shall be in a position whereby God is undressing politicians in this way? Who knew about it? These things that we are talking about, they did not happen yesterday. They did not happen yesterday. They happened a way long back. A way long back. A way long back. A way long back. My brother, my sister, stay in the presence of God. Stay in the presence of God. We need to keep moving in the presence of God. Politicians, stay in the presence of God. Leaders, stay in the presence of God. Whosoever you call yourself, stay in the presence of God. Be fruitful in the spirit of God. You have the spirit of patience. You have the spirit of perseverance. You have the spirit of endurance. You need it in times of tribulation. You need it in times of persecution. But when persecution comes, it does not mean that there is no future. But what is needed is for you to stand. Now take note of what the Bible says. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 to 10. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap. So which means us as a, as a nation, as Zimbabwe, we shall reap. There is a time for us to reap. We shall reap. If we faint not, but the, there's a condition. If we faint not, because in due season we shall reap. But if we faint not, the word faint not there, it means if we do not get tired, if we do not lose hope. Because people, they have a tendency of losing hope. I know right now I'm talking to somebody, some people in the nation of Zimbabwe. You are in politics, whatever that you are doing. You believe in God and things are like they are falling apart. You are about to lose hope. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, 
do not lose hope because there's a time for you to reap just be patient wait patient upon the lord there is a time for you to reap but in due season if you do not faint the condition here is that don't lose hope don't faint some of us will lose hope in our marriages some of us will lose hope in our businesses some of us will lose, will lose hope in the decisions that we have made Sometimes we need to stay strong and be patient, especially if we have decisions that we have made under the presence of God. We have to be patient upon them. We have to keep on looking upon the Lord. We have to keep on waiting upon the Lord. For in due time and in due season, we will reap. God is not a man that he should lie. And he does not forget. And he does not repent. So in due season and due time, we shall reap. But the condition is that if we faint not. So you need to be sure that you don't faint not. James chapter 5 verse 8. The Bible says, you also must be patient. Keep your hopes high for the day of the Lord is coming is near. Now, what does that mean? God is about to do something that is great. God is about to do something that is big. But what God wants from you, what God wants from you is to keep your hope. The Bible says there is still hope in Israel. There is still hope in the nation of Zimbabwe. Ah, yeah. My brother, my sister, listen to me. There is still hope in the nation of Zimbabwe. I know that people have suffered. I know that political leaders from the opposition, from everybody, you have tried everything so that things can be best in the nation of Zimbabwe. But it, it seems that nothing is working out. There is still hope in the nation. All that is needed is for our political leaders to walk in the path of God, to repent. And us as general people and ordinary people and children of the nation, we need to pray. It's not all about Zimbabwe. Any person who's listening to me, wherever you're watching me from, you have a nation that has its own problems. You have your life and you have your own problems. All that is needed for you is to repent and wait patiently upon the Lord. Because God is about to do something. James chapter 5 verse 8 have said it. Romans chapter 12 verse 12. The Bible says, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. And be constant in prayer. Now, that's why I always emphasize on prayer. Every time when I give a prophecy, I emphasize on prayer. Because the situation that you are facing, it is tribulation. You are suffering. You are in difficult position. No job in your life. No money. You can't touch money. You can't make it in life. You are suffering. Bad dreams, nightmares, situations and circumstances, problems all over. Some of you, the time when you receive your salaries, that's when problems will come. Some of you are outside of the country. You have been trying everything. You are in South Africa, Namibia, wherever you are. You have been trying to work out things, but things are not working out properly. Now, listen to me. There has to be a hope that is inside your heart. Any person who does not have hope does not have a future. Get me very clear. If you don't have a hope, you don't have a future. But if you have hope, you are hoping to get a better job tomorrow. You are hoping to receive a better salary tomorrow. You are hoping to receive healing tomorrow. You are hoping to receive deliverance tomorrow. You are hoping for the change of your nation. Then what are you supposed to do? Now, in that hope, be patient in the tribulation because hope is needed in times of tribulation and the patience now is the backboard where you should travel through in is that mode of transport you have hope and you have tribulation but what transports you now to the next level it is patience Romans chapter 12 verse 12 says it be patient Rejoice in hope and be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayers. So which means that as, as you are rejoicing in the hope that you have and, and as you are patient in the tribulations, you need to be also constant in prayer. That's why I always emphasize about prayer. The situation of Zimbabwe is very bad. The situation of people is not good. The whole situation is not good. The situation of your nation is not good. But then how are we going to make it? Number one, have hope. Number two, 
Have patience. Number three, be constant in prayer. That's why the Bible says in the book of Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. God is ready to do something. Let me take you back into the book of John chapter 5, from verse 1 to 9. There's a story of a man who went to the pool of Bethsaida where there were invalids, meaning to say people that are sick, disabled, having critical challenges of life, health-wise, most of them. And one man was paralyzed when there. The Bible says he was about 38 years old. The Bible did not state which day did this man go there. The Bible never spoke about it. It did not state. Which means probably they might have put him there when he was young. And they were waiting for the waters of Bethsaida to be steered. When the waters are steered by an angel, the one who goes in first will receive the healing and go back to home. Now take note of this. He was there. We don't know for how long. Probably for 38 years he was there. Maybe they put him there when he was born. We don't know. But still, he could see some other people receiving healing and going. He could see some other people receiving testimony and going. He could see some other people taking and receiving because they were first to go inside. But still, he did not lose hope. He continued sitting there, believing that one day I shall be able to enter inside the water. My brother, you don't know the power of patience. You need to be patient in the Lord. You don't just need to be patient not out of the Lord. You need to be patient under the presence of God. In the Lord, trusting in God. Keeping the hope. He kept the hope until Jesus, when he came to Jerusalem, he had to run away from his disciples because when he came to this man, when he went to Bethsaida on that pool, he did not go with his disciples. We never heard about Simon Peter. We never heard about John. They don't know what Jesus, what Jesus did and where Jesus had God. He just disappeared from them. In John chapter 5, started telling us that there was a feast and Jesus went there. But with who? They did not mention the disciples. And when he went there, he left the feast and he went to the pool. Only to pick up one man out of everybody who is suffering. And he saw him. And he saw, he looked at him and he knew that he was been there for a long time. And he started talking with him. Why are you here? And he said, I have no man to put me inside the pool. When I try to go inside the pool, someone goes first before me. I have no one to put me in the pool. And Jesus said, arise, take up your bed and go. Now, the point here is this. These men have been patient for a long time, waiting for the pool. But you never know that the ways of God are not the same as the ways of people. He was believing that the pool is going to heal him. But yet his healing was not in the pool. So what, I, what, do, I, what do I mean? I'm talking about your life. Sometimes the physical things that you can touch, that you believe in, that they can rescue your life, they can deliver you, probably they can't do anything. But still, you must learn to be very patient in times of tribulation. Because God has a way out to bring you out of the pit. He was never expecting to walk unless he goes inside the pool. But he started walking by the word of Jesus Christ. And he had never dreamed that Jesus would come to him. Probably he was not even knowing about Jesus. And he was not even knowing about him. According to the conversation, if you can read the, 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 the whole chapter. So, what am I saying? I'm saying that eight years is not a joke. He waited patiently. People of, people of God, patience is the greatest key. But only those who live under the presence of God, can be able to be very, very patient in their lives. If you are not patient enough, it means you don't stay in the presence of God. If you don't stay in the presence of God, you can't be patient. Don't be too fast 
to swallow before you chew. This is the problem that we are facing nowadays. Talking about marriages, talking about political things, talking about decision making. We have people that are too fast, too fast to make decisions before they chew them. You need to sit down, chew them under the presence of God. Make a proper decision. Make a proper decision by the Spirit of God. And any decision that comes by the Spirit of God does not lead you to fail. No. There is nobody who has ever walked in the path of God and failed. It is not possible. That is why I said, in the whole leadership of Zimbabwe, from the top, from the president to the least, the political parties, whosoever, God is saying, repent. If these people have once repented, God is saying again, repent, 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 repent. That's what God is saying. And you need to understand that once God has given you an opportunity, if you don't believe it because of the person who is saying it, then you are lost. You are lost. So my brother, my sister, whoever you are watching, I want to pray for you. And I pray for you for more grace, more strength, and more power. You need endurance. You need patience. You need to stay in the presence of God. For in the presence of God, there is no lacking. There is no suffering. In the presence of God, there is success. It is full of joy. It is full of testimony. It is full of happiness. That is the presence of God. I pray for you, whoever you are watching me. May the Lord touch you. May the Lord set you free. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Patience is the greatest thing. Stay in the presence of God. And you will never fail in your life. Stay in the presence of God and you will make it in your life. God bless you. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy chapter number 18 verse 18 I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and i will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that i shall command him if a prophet is to be true his words shall surely come to pass if not he is false though in certain circumstances one be celebrated but brings sorrow take note of deuteronomy chapter number 18 and verse 22 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21 For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God is still speaking through his servant Apostle Petros Alpha. Remember to share and subscribe for more transformative word and prophecies from God. <laughs>